Welcome back to Shavy Down Under. I'm Doug and it's a Friday, it's afternoon, lazy day. Had the shower, done my hair, not much to do and it's time to shave. So we're going to do the last of the trio of um, collaboration shaving soaps between Gentleman's Knot, George Zaharoff and three uh, perfume vloggers from YouTube. And of course, that's Andrea Charles, Justin Copeland, and Ross Carlos. So we're going to do Andrea's um, siren today. I'll just put this up. I hope everything stays in place. There we go. New soap, splash, candle, and bar of soap. So of course, we're going to be concentrating on the splash a bit later on and of course the soap beautiful presentation a nod to a Greek heritage get that all out of the way so here is the soap a chocolate, a chocolate pudding mix that's what it looks like Smells wonderful. We'll get into the scent profile in a minute. Um, going with the old faithful, the usual suspect. And we're going for the sixth shave with the Perma Sharp Triple Life shave, uh, blade in there. So I had the shave on Wednesday, it was its fifth. And yeah, it's doing fine. And my criteria for this shave is nine shaves. So Next Friday, if it survives next Friday, I believe the Triple Life um, moniker that they gave it to be correct. I'm putting it down to three shaves per blade. Okay, let's jump in. Get this show on the road. Oh. This has come up really nice and a little bit surprising. So I got, so I got inspired during the week from a message from... Bradley, long time uh, supporter of the channel, and he sent me a photo of his old spice mug, and I thought, you know what? I haven't used my old spice mug in ages, so it's time for me to do the same. So this shows for you, Bradley. And look at that. That's um, amazing. Now I'm smelling something in this that's not on the profile. <laughs> And um, yeah, it, it smells good either way. So let's get this on. We've got the Drake Shaving Brush from Darwin Shaving. I'm gonna have to squeeze some of this out. So how much has come out of, out of the brush. So in the container, this lathered up quite fast and I was able to just pour it into the mug and then get the lather nice and thick inside the mug. Wouldn't have wanted to been, the mug wouldn't want to be any smaller for this brush. The brush soaking in hot water for about five minutes beforehand. So it's nice and warm on the face. And away we go. So the sixth shave with this blade. So what we do know is the soap base here is just excellent. So it doesn't matter the scent that's been mixed in with it, the soap itself, even if it had no scent, would just be perfect.
So the top notes, I've also got a story for you too, a shop story regarding a customer who I call Harry the Bastard. But we'll get on with uh, <laughs> the business first. So we've got the top note of ginger, coriander, cardamom and almond. Now we all know I'm no pro when it comes to scents. Like I can't break them down like the professionals do. Same with wine. I get more of a, I can't break the scent of a wine down like professionals do it, but I can get an overall view of it. So out of those, I believe I get a bit of ginger, just a bit of warmth from the ginger. The mids, and I think, I believe it's the mids that stand out with this uh, soap scent. Is coffee, leather, white moss, and dark chocolate. I don't have any idea about white moss, but I can tell you the coffee, the leather, and the dark chocolate is there. If you want to see a good video of um, making a lather up, if you're sort of new to uh, double edge shaving, go to Uncle L, his channel. And what he does now is he's got an overview cam or overview camera angle of him mixing up his lather, starting from scratch and then build, slowly adding water and building up to a thick, uh, uh, what's the right word? He really does build them up into a, a soft serve looking um, lather. Yeah, it's very interesting. There's the first pasta. So, we have a, and the base notes are patchouli, lorenox, we'll talk about that, cognac and vetiver bourbon. Now, 
I thought I'd better look up Loranox. So Loranox is a, um, a scent that was uh, discovered or made by the main company and who have helped make these soaps. So the basic scent profile of Loranox is woody, ambery, leathery. And they're the only people who can use that scent. Now, the one scent that I am smelling in this uh, soap, and for me it's actually a, a pleasant surprise, is I am actually getting pipe tobacco. And it's not the scent of just the, the tobacco itself in the pouch, it's the smoke scent of pipe tobacco. And it wasn't there when I was just sniffing the container of the soap, the hard soap itself. It was there after I'd mixed up the lather. Now, I don't know if anyone else has discovered that who's got this soap, but it'd be interesting to find out. As I said personally, I think that's a plus. I really enjoy it. But what the scent profiles or the scents that I do get on my nose... Uh, as I said earlier, the ginger up top, the mid really punches through for me. The, the coffee, the leather, the dark chocolate, it's all there. I'm adding in pipe tobacco smoke. And, and then down the bottom, I'm getting some of that vetiver bourbon. And there is, and like, when I wrote all this out, I, I've got a decanter of gentleman's, Gentleman Jack. Oh, gentleman's not Gentleman Jack. But, uh, you know, poured into a decanter. And I sniffed that. And you can smell it. Bourbon does smell good, doesn't it? I've never really just sat there and sniffed it. And and I know what vetiver smells like. I enjoy vetiver. And there is, I could scent, I could smell that scent. And I don't know about the cognac. Look how quick this soap dries on my hot face. My hot head. I hope I'm just um, freshen up.
Okay. I'm really happy with that. No nicks, I'll just leave it as it is. Don't want to tempt fate. No, I just got a message from the shop. <laughs> So, Harry the Bastard, let me tell you about Hazza. Harry, and that is his uh, real name, was a regular in the shop about four or so years ago. And he's a big old bruiser, you know, real knuckler. And... He was all right. He'd come in, get his DVDs, would chat a little bit about music and things like that. And um, he was all right. Not a problem. Anyway, one day he comes in and he grabs a couple of DVDs to exchange. And he does the old standover tactics on me. Oh, this is made up. I spend a lot of money here and I'm a bit short on dough and uh, I think you owe me a couple. I'm like, what? Thank you. You're an idiot, mate. That's what I'm thinking. I wasn't going to tell him. Bang, if he connected, I was going into next week. And I'm like, there, I just, here you go, go. Didn't see him for about 18 months, and then he bobbed up again. Well, he lost all his pawn shop privileges, hadn't he? So, I had nothing, cold shoulder. I'll take them, I'll take money from those that I despise. To quote a cold chisel song. So I gave him the nickname Harry the Bastard from a Young Ones episode. A few people out there ever, ever watched the Young Ones back in the 80s. There was an episode where um, the Young Ones, they rented out a, a VHS a movie. And they had to have it back by a certain time, 9am or 6am. Anyway, all this carry-on happens and, and uh, the guy that rented them the DVD was Harry. And he scams them so they go over their due date and the whole catchphrase is Harry the Bastard. So that's where I nicknamed Harry, Harry the Bastard. So anyway, Harry came in the other day. I might even try and pull up a uh, screenshot photo of Harry the Bastard from the young ones. Harry comes in during the week And I know he's sold his house in recent, or his mum's house in recent time. Like, I won't mention the real estate agent or company he used, but it's a big one, especially through the rural areas of South Australia. Now, this is no, um, oh, in case people work this stuff out, nothing bad against that company. But anyway, Harry sees this place he likes. So the real estate agent said, uh, put down a thousand bucks and then we know you're serious and uh, we can do some business. 
So Harry puts down a thousand bucks. And um, there were some delays and everything. And I, and I don't know the time frame of the delays. But um, Harry eventually gets back to him and goes, right, I've got all the money, I'll buy that house. And the bloke goes, sorry, mate, you're too late. We've just sold it. And he goes, well, why put the thousand dollars down? And the boy, the real estate is like, oh, sorry, mate, you've done your dog. So Harry hasn't chased up this thousand. And he turns around and says to me, the irony of it all, you know, how bad it is that people rip people off. And I'm standing there and I'm thinking, can't you remember four years ago when you ripped me off? You did your gangster standover tactics over me to get to 40 bucks is all he had to put out. And now he's telling me about getting ripped off. Harry the Bastard. Anyway, in that four years, he's, he's gone to rack and ruin. He's now got teeth in his head that a shithouse rat would be embarrassed to have. I know some years ago when we were amicable and he was all right to be in as a customer, he said, come in at one stage, oh, I've got to stop buying DVDs I, or exchange them. I said, oh, how come? I guess uh, I've got a bride coming over from the Philippines. That never happened. My God, that poor woman doesn't realise the bullet she dodged. Unbelievable. Okay. BBS. So the blade lives to fight another day. Gave me a very good shade. Just had to touch up a little bit afterwards. Didn't think there's any need for you guys to see that. But uh, very nice. Very nice. So let's just recap the soap. So that's Curly Sense. Siren. And... I really liked it, to be honest with you. I know with my partner it was her least favourite, but for me, I really like it. Be interested to see what the splash is going to be like. Here it is, the splash. Just before I get to that, what a great brush. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest looking brush? Should, everyone should get on board, grab one. You will not regret it. Um, Darwin shaving, I'll leave links. So, don't know if you're supposed to shake this stuff up, but, um, no, bad luck, I just did. Siren. See so, yeah, what it smells like compared to the soap. Yeah, but, uh, it smells different to the soap, but I'm not getting a lot of nose to start with, so on she goes, a liberal amount, alcohol burn off hits my nose, Yeah, different. I'm still getting that tobacco, that pipe smoke, tobacco pipe smoke. And the leather. The, maybe it's the vetiver bourbon that's giving me that sort of um, 
tobacco pipe smoke. The coffee is like a dark roast coffee. It's a very dark coffee um, scent. The leather maybe dark chocolate as well. Yeah, they're, they're the ones that are really punching through to me. Uh, it, it could be a lot different for you guys. I'm just going to put a bit more on. And uh, when my partner gets home, Dione. We'll see what she thinks. So I've noticed with the last two splashes, get a good five hours on your skin. And then after that, it really drops off. The projection drops off. Now I really like this. I really like it. It is so different to the other two soaps. Uh, yeah, scents, soaps. It just, um, yeah, just amazing the difference. Well, I better wrap this up. I'm going to sit here just blubbering over the scent of this um, aftershave splash. Oh, really nice. My God. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Been really interesting going over these three soaps over the past three weeks. Oh, I don't really want to pick one out, but they're all really nice. I think the Ross Carlos one, the business over pleasure, I probably just lean a little bit towards that, but only because I don't have a real summer scent perfume that and you know we're in autumn now are we um yeah i think we're into autumn now in australia um, i mean spring <sighs> i'm all over the shop like a mad woman's washing yeah so um but then again justin copeland's brass and soul like i really love that that fresh zingy um, orange in the gin and tonic you know Re that's a real nice scent as well man this one smells good real good all right i'll leave links trust me if you like that dark smoky leathery and i know the the tobacco smoke is not in the description but I'm telling you people it's there if you really like that scent I'm saying buy this one go out and buy it 79 US for the pack on um, gentleman's knot I can't remember if you can just buy the soap only if you can that'll be a lot cheaper but grab the pack get some goodies with it that's real cool. You get the bar of soap as well. That's so nice. Um, yeah. What more can I say? The weekend's upon us, people. Go out and do something. Nice weather today. I've got the cat outside, so he wouldn't have come in here and annoy me. He's enjoying his best life in the sun. Um, yeah, so get around. Catch up with some mates. Have a couple of drinks. Have some cool to eat with you with them all right people i'll be back on monday i've got to pull out another old vintage right i'm gonna to have to use a razor i haven't used before i reckon hmm let me think about that okay enjoy the weekend ciao for now